So between any hunting trips, which are going to be light on the ground at the start of the season for Zeus and I, due to lack of game on my local patch and busy at the Falkery Centre, not going to be travelling uh, several times a week to find hares for sure. So keep him fit. Well, his running line tethering system is just out of this world. The difference it makes to this big eagle's fitness rather than sitting on a block or a... a high swing perch quite quite um yeah life-changing for him it's shocked me how much extra fitness he holds just been able to fly up and down sort of i don't know 30 meters when he feels like it but actual fitness line work rope work is where it's at and i'll tell you why but let me first show you the setup i now use okay so i've always used a target mat if you're throwing food on the grass you are encouraging something as intelligent as an eagle to actually, when he's flying from the glove, work his way back, scanning the ground for food. I know someone's bird that got ruined by this. So have something he's not gonna see. A rubber car mat's easier, it's easier to clean, but I started with a whole small rubber car mat, reduced it down, reduced it down to about a foot square. This one's not even that. So just a target. You could use a bit of AstroTurf. I prefer a black mat. It means the food that you place on it stands out and it's not looking like another bit of grass. And then we've got the rope line. So the first, however many yards of line are thicker. And then it's onto a backing cord. It's obviously something that's not gonna snap. But the first bit here, this is eight mil line. This is not a heavyweight rope. People seem to think you've got to have a heavy rope so your bird's dragging the rope and then thereby increasing muscle whilst not pulling its legs out the back of its body. You don't need the weight. This is all rope line is about. That line dragging on the grass or whatever your land is dragging on the ground means the bird cannot do a few flaps, get up to speed and glide back to you the typical way birds of prey will fly to and fro the glove. This drag, just the fact it's dragging on the wet grass, means that the bird has to flap its wings all the way or a lot of the way back. We'll see them in action. The fitter they get, the more, the more they can carry that weight, that drag, and get enough speed up to still glide. You're just looking at enough rope. It doesn't have to be. So this is, for the ease of winding up, the thick bit of rope is only the first third of the line. It's all about the drag, all about making the bird flap its wings all the way to you, not gliding back to you. That's how we're building fitness. Just like using a creance line, you tie that line to the bird's jesses or the bird's swivel. That's whatever you feel most comfortable with. On this bird, we use Sampo swivels. Most people would think that's a tiny swivel for an eagle. I tie to the swivel. If you are of the mindset, whoa, Dave, if the bird flies past and gets spooked and you bring it down by the swivel, the line attached to it, that swivel will snap or that extra impetus. If you're bringing any bird down on a creance line with enough force to snap even a swivel made of cheese, you're not doing things correctly. The pressure you'll be putting on that bird's legs, bringing it to a sudden stop, I'd be more worried about the bird's safety than any swivel. You're bringing the bird down gently let the line run through your gloved hand and bring it down gently. The protecting of the bird means the swivel certainly won't break unless you really have gone for one of those real cheap eBay things. So I tie to a swivel, you tie to a swivel, all the jesses, whatever suits you. I'm gonna get him ready and I'll tell you some more about this wonderful way to keep the birds fit in between hunting. Okay, line attached, target mat there. I work him on a variable, a, it's so cold, a variable reward. So I'll be dropping a bit of food on the mat. It's very tedious when you're on your own because you've got to re, re, rebate the target. So we'll have a chick leg, a chick head, a whole chick. Depends on his weight, but a variable, a very, very, geez, I can't say it, a variable reward. It doesn't matter to me if he sees the food in the glove. This bird isn't going to be following on. So when I recall him, for a missing his target, he might get a chick leg or he might get a whole chick, depending on the effort he put in. But 
it doesn't matter to me that he can see the food on offer because he's going to get it anyway. We're not waving him over, flying him for miles a day as a following on hawk. But Golden Eagles will work for the same size betchings as any Harry's hawk will. It seems crazy, but they'll work for a chick leg all day long. Crazy thing. So come over here. So we'll start with a short one just to get him interested and make sure he knows what he's doing. This is only the second time this year he's been on a line, on a training rope line. So you can clearly see, have a look at that. I think even on there, you can see there's bait, there's food, there's a reward because of that mat there. If this grass was a few inches long, you're not gonna see food over there at all. Why don't we fly him to Emily and I? Why don't Emily, who's behind the camera right now, why don't we just fly him backwards and forwards to the glove like you see people do on YouTube? Because when I lose this guy or misplace him or he's gone over a hedge, I don't, even, I don't want him to see, oh, there's a person, they'll have food, I'll fly over to them. He won't cause them any harm terrifying this guy will work out in a field meeting with a crowd of people but he won't fly to any old person and that's the way i want it i don't want my eagle thinking anyone he can go and land on their arm stupidity itself you really want these birds to have maybe two or three one or two key falconers that they trust and bond with not anybody not an experienced day bird that'll fly to anyone so the hood, obviously, if you're going to do this sort of work with your hawk, eagle, whatever, needs to be hooded or it's going to be constantly trying to get back there. And the hood comes off. Off he goes. We'll do a short one. We'll give a little chick leg reward. Zeus! <whistles> <laughs> And there you have a bird, nervous because the camera is very close to us. And it's only the second time I've done this work. If you fly gossips, you've seen that a million times in training. Probably the third time Zeus has ever done that. Someone else in close proximity, he's tried to snatch and run. Possibly because he got enough impetus up and it's only his second time out. But I hope what it gave you the opportunity to see that swivel He's never gonna snap on the end of that line because the line is looped over my finger and he's brought down gradually. Things like this that make these videos all the better. Real time, real life, not cutting it out to make myself look good. I'm just an average guy flying birds, but I've been doing it long enough to show you some things. Zoom. See, he wants to come back, but he's spooked himself. We'll give him a second. Often in these instances, I'll just go and pick him up. Zeus. Zeus. Secure your jesses. He's at his betching, we're back to normal. And we'll try it again. We'll move you guys just a couple of yards further back. Now, the hood means we can chill out, get everything sorted and rebate the map. Okay, we're just gonna go most of the rope line now. Clearly see the target. We'll give him a bigger reward. We'll see how he behaves. So, personally, personally, don't train your eagle up and down trees. I used to fly my goshawks up and down trees to get them fit, get that recall as well. You don't want a golden eagle landing on things unless you really are going to hunt through woodland with your eagle because you can fly miles from power lines and grey boxes but if you misplace your eagle for half an hour that will land where it likes. Zeus has landed in one tree once in 11 seasons. He's trained off the ground and getting it off the ground and getting that bird going creates a lot more muscle power than training him off a tea perch or something like that for sure. So we can take the hood off. Way he goes. Get the line through your little finger because, of course, we haven't got the line spiked in the ground, just like any creance. You can't have the bird coming to a full stop, but you need to have some control. Zeus! 
We'll just see what he does. He's really got to hit the brakes this time. Zeus! Hey! Hey! Come on. Perfect. We've got the silly behaviour out of the way. His talons are so sharp, they're getting in the line. Secure your jesses. Certainly with a young hawk, it could always bounce up in your face. Bigger reward that time, something to focus on. Get in the habit. Wipe your bird's beak when the food's gone, little trigger. Tells him it's all gone until the next time. We'll give him one more and then we'll stop filming and I'll carry on without you. So variable, variable, I can't say it, can I? Rewards, chick body, chick leg, chick head, either way. But you want something you can see on the target at that distance. This will work for your red tails, your goss hawks, your harris hawks, as well as your eagles. Why aren't we doing loads and loads of bull cross or other lure work? Be careful with lure work. That bird knows it's an inanimate object on a bit of string. They learn so quick that it's certainly not real game. And no matter what you do, whatever you do with your pulleys they know the difference between a hair on open ground and any kind of lure work you do and if you do lots and lots and lots and lots of lure work before your bird's wedded to real game it can ruin your bird make it lure bound or make it very picky or very difficult to get hunting in fact i'd do a little bit of lure work to sharpen your bird up once it's ready to go free and hunt and then personally I wouldn't do a lot of lure work until it's wedded to quarry and it knows we're in the training field. That means easy lure work, easy for him, whatever you think, or we're in the hunting field, we're gonna get a hot dinner. I reward for my kills. They know the difference, you do what you wanna do. This work really does build cardio and especially muscle, muscle on the bird's chest and under their wings. Rope work done well is really, really good work. It works well for things that are up to save calories and shut their metabolism down such as red tails and eagles much better to be flying them than starving them massively see you again we've got a big reward down there right now So what you saw there, you saw him gliding. So we could do a slightly heavier end on that rope. This bird is in his 11th season. All other seasons apart from this one and the last two, he's been spent his summer in a big aviary or on a block or on a swing perch. He can't drag that rope 10 paces. It's unbelievable. So the last three summers he spent on his running line. I can't recommend that system. It could prove fatal to birds. It's got to have a bird that understands it and you've got to understand the design. But because this bird flies up and down all day long, he comes out the, he just starts the season as, as fit as he would have took weeks previously to get those muscles big and working again. It's phenomenal. And you can see even now he's powering away and he's actually got enough go in him that he is starting to glide. Previous years, slogging all the way back as that line drags through the ground. But I will tell you, when the grass is wetter, you do get more drag. This system is a great way to get your birds fit before you enter them, because you're not just getting them fit, you're really cementing the recall. But of course, once they are recalling well, and they've got a level of fitness, get those birds hunting. And then in between times, rope work with sensible use of lure work will keep those birds really fit and on the ball. All 
always remember to loop the line over your little finger when the bird's free of it. When the bird's free from you, you've got that control. It's always a gentle eater, this guy. All gone. Don't pull the food away. Don't tempt your bird back with a rabbit leg. Snatch it away. Get it used to flying for an empty glove or what it thinks is an empty glove. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Or just show it what it's gonna have. When you get to golden eagles, if they see the food, let them eat it all. Then you won't get any silly, footy grabby behavior hoping to stop you taking their food away. When you're calling your birds in any of their training, have your whistle shouting out their name in the countryside. Yeah, not good etiquette, is it? Scaring all your game away. Have your whistle command, use your hand signals. You're back in all your dark greens and browns. You're against the hedgerow. You're pretty hard to see. The white of your hand isn't, it's a little flag. And moving like this to their keen eyesight really stands out. We all here at Icarus Fulkery, you'll all see us using hand signals, a little white flag. It will catch their eye for miles away. We do that in all of our training too. A lot quieter than shouting out your bird's name. One more thing, as your bird builds fitness, like any athlete, you want to keep increasing that fitness. If you've got a hillside or a very closely cropped, nice lawn or sheep graze hillside, a slope, a gradient, start doing your rope work up that gradient. It can start gentle and increase. Can't do it with Zeus. He's just not that stupid. He's a typical eagle or buzzard, knows how to conserve energy, and he's worked out, bugger this. I'll fly off the hillside, get some speed, turn around and come up to you. I'm not gonna fly straight up a hill. I'm not that stupid. That's him. Many of your birds, yeah, your gossips will every time. Gradient starts increasing cardio. Always worth adding in. Whenever you're doing your first, especially your first recall training with a young or a, train, a new, yeah, a new bird in training, one thing you've got to be really careful of, and I would say, number one, we're talking parent reared especially, but more so with imprints. Goshawks are probably the worst for this. You call them to the glove, they get bottled, they spook, and instead of flying away from you, they literally pull off at the last second and they'll rake your face and they'll go for your eyes. I've used to have scars on one of my eyes from flying my first goshawk. Easy ways to do it. One is not to look if you're really worried about your bird, but the other is how you hold the glove. Instead of having it level, hold it so your arm is blocking your face and the target for the food is a little way off. Watch this. Your arm is blocking your face and the food's above, much better. It's not level with your face. And again, you want a bird whose feet can be next to your fingers, even with food, without getting attacked. Why would it snatch at my hand? I never snatch the food away. Right, Emily's gonna go and do some bird work. I'm gonna crack on with this. We're not gonna bore you with loads of flights. I'll add a couple more in, but key points. Target mat, don't throw the food on the grass. You tie your line to your swivel or your jesses, that's up to you. But you should not be bringing that bird down. You saw real time action. You're not bringing that bird down to a sudden stop, whatever it is. You shouldn't ever be able to snap a swivel because you're not gonna put that much strain on it ever. Variable, variable reward 
obviously if you've got a hawk that's following on you need it to come to an empty glove or food that it can't see in the glove because when you're following on you're not always going to reward it with a betcha it's going to come on the 50 50 chance there's some food there make sure it can see the target start off short and increase your distance and balance the front end of your rope to a just enough weight so the bird is always flapping its wings that's all you're trying to do not add weight you're not training your pit bull to drag a tire around to build muscle that way that's not what it's about we're not stretching its legs we're building the chest muscles and that just means it's got to be pumping those wings increase the distance but be sensible be sensible because on your own you're rebating the mat that is really really tedious and this is what i tell myself I've been slobbing around all summer. We both need to get fit. You've got to start walking the fields with your bird hunting. The bird's got to go hunting. And you know what? You doing the same distance gets you fit. More importantly, sometimes with Zeus, if the food's small, he won't fly all the way back. I'll go halfway, let him do the, the easy that way and call in the long distance to the glove. The trouble with that is once they get their heading gear, they're chasing you before you can get that line stretched out. Do a bit of running, it'll get you fit. Hood the bird in between rebaiting. You won't get any silly, messy behavior. Hood your birds, for goodness sakes. Makes a whole of falconry much easier and less stressful for your hawk. Hope you've enjoyed this little mini tutorial and we'll see you in the next one. Subscribe. <laughs>